In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the workflows related to creating an invoice from a sales order and creating a bill from a purchase order or an outsource purchase order. Now, once the integration is live and active, you're going to see the new columns that will appear on your sales screen, which includes the invoice column here. And also on the buy screen, which is an overview of your purchase orders, you'll see a bill column here as well. And on the outsource purchase order list, the same thing will apply with a new column for bills. Now, when you're generating these documents in zero from the cell screen, for example, you can either do it here on the cell screen list where you would choose create invoice, or you can also go inside of the documents. This is applying for both sales orders and purchase orders and outsource purchase orders. And you'll see the actual information here in the top right. So in this case, I've already made a invoice for this sales order. But if we go into the sales screen, I can generate the invoice directly from the sales screen itself for this sales order by choosing create invoice. So once that invoice is actually created in zero through the integration, it'll turn green and that will actually become an active link. And that active link will always travel with this sales order. Now, if we open up the sales order, you can see that there's some information in here, such as the customer, the sales order number. There's also a bill to and ship to address available in here. And uh, here, here are all of the items with their respective tax rates in addition your total value. So when that zero invoice is created, if we click on it, what will happen is it will open up a brand new tab where you'll have the information in here. Now, as I went through the last video, I showed that when you set up the integration, you can push the invoices over either as a draft not a, or waiting approval and also approved. We chose approved. So this is a live and active invoice for your revenue and sales. So inside of here, you can see information that has pulled over and this would include mainly the data that's inside of your Xero account, which is mapped through your customer name and email address. So here is the customer name. Uh, there isn't an associated address with this name, so we don't see it here. But if you do have an address that's associated with the name, it should appear here. It can also be pulled from the sales order. Date, due date, and here is the invoice number. So this is the invoice that's created from that sales order being made through the uh, integration. There's also a reference number. So anytime you have a sales order that's being pushed to an invoice, the reference will match to the sales order number. So you have a matching invoice directly to your sales order number. A couple of zero specific items, but item codes are the same as Katana SKUs. Description as well. Quantity, unit, price, that all, all of this passes over. Uh, the account that was mapped to, so for example, we chose the sales revenue account for sales order invoices. The tax rate that was also mapped during the setup process will appear here. Total amount will be here as well. And then down here at the bottom, you can see some information related to the history of this invoice. In this case, it was created through Zero's API from the Katana Manufacturing ERP application. So lots of things are happening with this integration, but most importantly, um, it's very easily accessible directly from the Katana app itself by just choosing that link. Now also uh, for these links, when you're creating invoices, you can easily go inside of the sales order itself and choose create invoice. And it will be pushed directly from this page as well. Now, when we head over to our purchase order list on the buy screen, you'll have a list of your POs here, which works exactly the same way, same exactly, same exact type of workflow. Choose the not build, select create bill, and then this will push that bill directly into your Zero account. That will then become an active link, which you can open up. And in the settings page, we chose to create bills that are already approved through this workflow. And here you'll see the reference, which would be the purchase order that links back to this bill and also the correct supplier and the items, item codes for your materials, the item description, the quantity, as well as the mapped expense account and tax rates, as well as totals here. So this is already a good to go bill linked back to your supplier. And uh, you can see the history as well here at the bottom where it shows that this bill was created through the same API 
as well as from the Katana Manufacturing ERP application. So that's basically how that works. That same information will be available inside of the purchase order too. So you can just click right into it and off you go directly into your Zero accounting platform. And last but not least, this also applies to any businesses that are doing outsource purchase orders, meaning that you're buying manufacturing services. You can go directly into your outsourcing sub tab and then choose the not build option and create a bill directly for your outsource purchase orders as well. So I hope that gives you a nice overview of how this integration works. Of course, if you come across any trouble, you're more than welcome to write to our team. Always happy to help. And I hope that you have great success using this integration with Katana.